These are the top 11 cybersecurity tools for beginners, and this is focused on defensive security. I originally started with the top 10, and then I found another one, so we ended up with a top 11. And again, these are defensive security tools for beginners. So let's jump into it. The first one. The first tool is called Surfshark, and Surfshark is a VPN that helps encrypt your data in transit so that malicious actors can't see your data or manipulate your data or steal your data. And it also has an antivirus, which is a program that's designed to detect and remove viruses and really any other kind of malicious software from your computer or your laptop. And they actually allow uh, for unlimited endpoints so you can have your phone and basically any other device that you have on your network as well. Uh, so what a VPN is, what a virtual private network is, is it encrypts and protects internet traffic. And this could be again on any device going in any direction, either you making a request or somebody sending you something, so on and so forth. It can also hide your IP address and your location so that nobody knows who you are or where you are when you're uh, conducting your internet activities. And of course, geo restrictions and any access block website. So there, I know people that are in countries like Iran that can't access the outside world because Iran has certain restrictions on their WAN, their wide area network, which is basically their internet in Iran. And they can't uh, conduct any kind of interact interactions with anybody outside of Iran's network. So they have to get a VPN so that they can actually interact with me, for example, because I'm in the United States, right? And so if they want to talk to me in the United States, they use their VPN to do it. Um, privacy and security is another big deal. So it obviously protects personal data, browsing history, it blocks malware, any kind of phishing attempt and any online tracking that happens. And then there's something called the no borders mode that you can use to access internet in restrictive countries, which we already talked about. Uh, some of these points seem to be uh, kind of repetitious, so we have uh, speed and performance, so you can enjoy uh, fast, stable connections with Sh Surfshark. You can also stream and download uh, content without any kind of buffering or lag. They actually use VPNs and Surfshark for video game streaming uh, or any kind of online gaming or anything like that without any kind of a latency or ping issues. Uh, you have multi-device support, as we already mentioned. So from a single account, you can have unlimited devices that you can actually uh, support with the VPN as well as the antivirus, uh, desktop, mobile, tablet devices, so on and so forth. User-friendly, very, very easy to use. Uh, they have a great support system, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, it's a GUI, so it's a graphic user interface. So you don't really need to know any complex or sophisticated tactics to be able to use it. Super, super user-friendly to use. Um, for beginners, some of the beginner-friendly features is the setup is super easy, installation is super easy, interface is really easy, there's a lot of support, and the pricing plans are also very, very affordable. I think you can get uh, the one that we have in the description below is seven cents a day, basically. So it's like two dollars a month, two twenty a month, something like that, and you get unlimited devices with all of the the bells and whistles that comes with Surfshark. Our next tool is RoboForm. So RoboForm is a freemium password manager. Um, freemium basically means they have a free tier and then they have premium tiers. Um, unlimited password storage, as many passwords as you got, as many as you want, as many accounts and websites, so on and so forth that you want to store the password for. AES-256 uh, encryption. So AES stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. And it's a very, very high encryption standard, which is damn near impossible to break. It's, it actually is impossible to break. The person would have to be very, very skilled to be able to break a 256 encryption. And even with all of that skill, they have to jump through so many hoops to be able to do it. So it's pretty much impossible to break the 256 encryption through AES. And then they also obviously have a complex password generator. So uh, password management is one of their key features. So you can generate and store a lot of strong passwords. This is a big deal, obviously, because if you are using the same password for every account that you have, you're leaving yourself at risk. And if somebody finds one of your passwords and they essentially try to guess what all of your other stuff is, so they find out your email password and then they assume that that's the same password that you have for your bank online banking, then you're 
SOL, shit out of luck, basically. And so this is the, the whole key behind this is that it generates really complex passwords that you don't have to remember. And then you can have multiple passwords for all of the different accounts that you got. And all of those things will be stored and you can even do it for free, right? So um, you can automatically log into websites, secure uh, uh, st or store things securely, organize passwords, credit cards, identities, everything that you got very easily under one uh, specific umbrella. So you, uh, all you need is to be able to memorize or remember your RoboForm password. And with your RoboForm password, you have access to everything else and everything else can be super complex as well. Uh, password generation, so it can generate strong passwords for you randomly. Uh, password length could be customized. The characters that you use could be customized. Uh, the templates for specific websites or applications can be generated and used and cust customized. So autofill templates are very, very super handy, uh, time saving, very convenient. Uh, form filling, which kind of just rides on that last point. So you can autofill with whatever templates you got, save times, of course, securely store all that information in there. Um, security and encryption, we already talked about it. So AES-256, as well as PBKDF2 hashing, which I didn't even actually know what it was. And uh, I had to kind of look into it. But the, the point is that it's very sophisticated and complex, and you're more than welcome to look into it. But hashing is essentially when you take a block of text, and you turn it into a random series of characters and numbers, so that when somebody looks at it, they have no idea what it is. And then what it does is that it can't uh, be decrypted. So hash, uh, hash values can't be decrypted unless somebody has some kind of a rainbow table or essentially the text value of that hash and then they go and reverse engineer it that way. And if it's already a complex uh, string that you're trying to turn into a hash value, then it doesn't exist in any kind of dictionary that's online. And it's very, very, it, it's impossible to decrypt, but to be able to decode it, they would need to have uh, storage of all the complex passwords, which is damn near impossible. So when you use uh, the PBK hashing, it makes it even more complex of a hashing algorithm. And so it's just not possible to decrypt that. Uh, 2FA, two-factor authentication for added security. You can securely store everything. Uh, sync and managing backups. So this is also a really good one. Um, you can sync passwords, obviously, which is very good for all of your accounts on all of your different devices. But backing up data is a big deal because if something does happen and you need access to your data, uh, this is a big deal in the recovery phase of NI NIST's uh, standards for cybersecurity. In their cybersecurity framework, their recovery portion of that requires that you have frequent backups. And if you don't have frequent backups, if something happens to your system or your network, then you can't recover based on your last major backup point. So uh, having regular backups is a big deal. A lot of people use either Google or Apple's um, uh, cloud, and th that's all good as well. Uh, in my opinion, it's always good to have redundancies, which means multiple backups so that just in case anything happens, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and then you can access your data from anywhere at any time. So beginner friendly features, again, easy to use interface, simple password generation and management, automatic form filling and data storage and robust security and encryption features. So these are all amazing things, especially when you write on that first point, which is it's all easy to use. The interface is easy to use. You don't need to know any complex hashing algorithms to do it yourself because you can always do it yourself. You can generate complex AES-256 uh, encryption for all of your stuff through the command line. You could do that if you know how to do that but you need to know how to do that. So if you don't know how to do that, you just use a really easy to use GUI. And then with a couple of clicks, you got all that stuff going. So being that the theme of this entire video is for beginners, uh, we are trying to do all the stuff that's super easy to use that will provide all the great security that you would need. So moving on to the next one. Our next one is Nmap. So now we're getting a little bit into the weeds of it, but it's still super friendly. I think it's still user friendly. Nmap is an open source tool, which means it's free and it's actually an industry standard and you can use it for both defensive security and offensive security. So it helps you explore networks and do security audits. And we're looking at it obviously from the defensive side. We're gonna look at it from the offensive side in a separate video, but we're just looking at it from the defensive side. And uh, it's very often used for penetration testing and ethical hacking, but for defensive security, it's also really, really excellent. And what it stands for is um, the network mapper. And so one of the things that it does is 
it does network vulnerability identification. So basically finding vulnerabilities inside of your network. You can identify open ports, services, operating systems. You can detect potential security vulnerabilities and weaknesses, and you can prioritize remediation efforts based on the vulnerability severity. And all of this information can be done through networks uh, or NMAPs uh, ingrained scripts. So it has vulnerability detection scripts. Uh, it's one of its main features. One of its basic features is that it'll show you what the op open ports are. And then with like a couple of extra options, you can find out the open services or the available services and operating systems. But to find vulnerabilities, you would have to use one of the scripts that are inside of Nmap. And these are all, they come pre-installed and ready available inside of nmap and this is a this is actually a command line tool now but i think there's actually a gui version of this as well a graphic user interface version of nmap nmap as well um, network mapping and discovery so you can use nmap to uh, create a network map which basically means what are all of the devices that are inside of your network it finds all of the ip addresses that are inside of your network and the big deal for that is that if you find something that's not one of your regular devices. So let's say you, as soon as you set up your uh, your LAN, your home Wi-Fi, right? You do a quick Nmap scan. You see all the phones and all the laptops and all the TVs and everything that's connected to your network. And then you keep a storage of all of those IP addresses inside of your network. And then you run another scan a couple of months later and you notice a new one. And you're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. I don't know what this one is. And you find out that it's an unauthorized device. Maybe it's your neighbor that's using your Wi-Fi or something like that. So this is a very useful tool defensively to try to find out one, what uh, devices are on your network and whether or not they're authorized, whether or not they should actually be there. Then we have, of course, security auditing and compliance. So regular security audits, compliance scans. Uh, you can identify deviations from the security policies and standards. If this is now veering off into the business world, so if you're doing this for work, but of course you can, if you want to be super compliant in your home network as well, same thing, right? So you can develop uh, effective remediation spans based on uh, uh, remediation plans, excuse me, based on the compliance and audits that you run using Nmap. Uh, intrusion detection and response, we already kind of touched on this a little bit. So uh, potential security threats that come in, uh, suspicious network activity and connections that may come in, and then develop and implement effective incident response plans, so IR plans. Uh, it's very, very useful to use Nmap for those things. Nmap is an industry center. You're going to hear about this all the time. If you've never been in cybersecurity or you're just getting into cybersecurity, you will hear about Nmap all the time. Uh, network segmentation and isolation. This is also really useful for defensive security. So um, vulnerable segments of your network, this would go into subnetting, which is a little bit more of a complex topic. But think about it like this. Inside of your network, you can have multiple subnetworks. You can have multiple sections inside of your network that can have, for example, all of your TVs could be one subnetwork. All of your phones could be another subnetwork, and then all your computers could be another subnetwork, for example. And if something were to happen, uh, and then you, obviously you can also do this by the rooms in your house, right? You can have all the devices that are set up in room A versus the kitchen versus the living room, so on and so forth. So each one of those things could be a subnet. And what happens is that if something were to happen to one of those devices in one of those segments, in one of those network segments, Technically, if you don't have network segments, that entire thing could ruin your entire network and every device in your network is now compromised. But if you have a network segment, then only the devices in that segment are at risk. And so if something were to happen, only the room A devices would be at risk and nothing would go into the living room or the kitchen or, you know, the, let's say if we're talking about the office environment, the conference room versus the CEO's office versus the management office versus the, the computers in the, the pit is what we call them, right? So it's like if somebody in the pit gets clicks on something, you don't want that lower level employee to also put the CEO's computer at risk. So you have a segment for everybody that's in the pit versus all the upper management and the C-suite executives. All of those computers should all be in their own segments. And so Nmap allows you to do that. It allows you to identify them as well as 
isolate them if anything were to happen to try to reduce the attack surface, as we call it, and prevent any kind of lateral movement in, in the network so that the, the other computers aren't compromised, basically. And so the beginner-friendly features, uh, the command line interface, as far as command lines are concerned, I think it's actually pretty user-friendly. Uh, it's easy to use. You don't need to know too many flags or too many options. You don't need to know a lot of syntax when it comes down to uh, Nmap. And uh, the manual is also really, really good. Um, there's a lot of scan templates and scripts. That's the other part that's like super useful. You can just identify. You go through the manual. You're like, okay, this... Uh, this script does this kind of scanning, so I'm going to use this particular script. And then you don't need to know how to set up a script. You don't need to know how to set up those templates. It just comes pre-configured and pre-installed. And then all you do is just choose it, and then it'll run it for you. And it'll detect vulnerabilities. It'll do a bunch of cool things. Uh, you can integrate with other security tools and platforms. This is also very, very useful. This is why it makes it such a great industry standard tool, and it integrates a, very well with a lot of other tools. And of course, there's a lot of documentation and a lot of support uh, online as well as on their own website because, again, this is a big, major tool. It's an industry standard. I've said that so many times already. Um, it's such a big tool that there's so much support on it that if you go on Reddit, if you go on... Uh, really any uh, community forum, you'll be able to find a lot of great help and a lot of great information. So super, super awesome tool. Uh, it can be for cybersecurity newbies and it can be for advanced cybersecurity professionals. So this one goes across the board with everybody. So let's move on to the next one. Angry IP Scanner is our next tool. I just love this name. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, just like the name implies, right? So it's an open source network scanner and it can scan IP addresses and ports on a range across multiple platforms. It's very simple. It's very uh, fast and very easy to use. Compared to Nmap, it's not as robust. So I'll just tell you that right now. We're going to go into some of its features right now, but just comparing it to Nmap, this is like an alternative to Nmap. Uh, it's not as robust and complex as Nmap, meaning it doesn't have as many options. So network scanning and uh, discovery, you can use it to scan and discover network devices and services, identify open ports, operating systems, potential vulnerabilities, uh, develop a comprehensive network inventory asset management plan, all the same things that you can do with Nmap, um, identify potential security vulnerabilities and weaknesses, prioritize remediation, uh, develop and implement effective vulnerability management, patching, all that, very similar, again, to Nmap. Uh, network segmentation isolation, again, very, very similar to what you can do with Nmap. Um, it's just is not as robust. So that's the, that's the thing that I'm trying to get across here. It's like a little bit more user-friendly, and uh, uh, you can use it from the web as well as download it onto your computer, but it's one of those things that it doesn't offer as many options and possibilities as Nmap does. Uh, regular security audits, compliance scans, identify deviations from security policies and standards, implement effective remediation plans, network monitoring, incident response, same thing, detect the network activities, see if there's anything, potential security threats on there, uh, suspicious network connections, and implement effective IR plans. And uh, they have a graphical interface, right? So the, the Nmap version, is that it's a command line, meaning you need to know commands. You need to know how to essentially use that black box that you just type a bunch of commands into text only. Uh, Angry IP Scanner has a graphical interface. It has a GUI. So you, you do a lot of these things with point and click type of stuff. Um, scan templates, settings, all that stuff is available as well. Fast and efficient, free and open source. So these are some of the great uh, uh, complex or great uh, options, excuse me, for uh, the angry IP scanner. And I think this one leans a little bit more for beginners simply because it has a graphic interface. So if you're intimidated by the command line, which you shouldn't be, because if you want to go into cybersecurity, then you should get very, you should embrace the command line. But uh, if you are a little bit intimidated by it and you just want something that's easier to use, this would be the one uh, because it does have that GUI. It has that graphic interface for you. So let us move on to the next one, Wireshark, which is another industry standard tool that's used by beginners and professionals alike. Very, very useful tool. And this is also used for pen testing as well as 
defensive security. So um, the network protocol analyzer is what that does. So it, it analyzes network protocols. And we'll talk about that in a little bit if you don't understand what that means. It, it sniffs packets. We'll talk about that if you don't know what that means. Um, it can be used for troubleshooting and security. And it is an industry standard. So this is a tool that is used uh, by uh, consumers as well as enterprise, as well as beginners, as well as advanced professionals. This is a very, very commonly used tool. So network traffic analysis. So you can capture and analyze network traffic, right? So if something is connected to a network, you can watch what it does. Uh, you can watch what connects to a network, which IP addresses are connecting to a network. Um, and you can analyze the activity of those uh, devices and see if they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, this is for all in the perspective of defensive security, right? So you can look at unknown protocols or unexpected protocols in communication and say, hey, you know what? So-and-so isn't supposed to be making this kind of a request from our file server, or they're not supposed to be trying to connect to this particular IP address, and they seem to be making multiple attempts at connecting to this IP address and they're trying every username and password possible. I think these guys are trying to hack into our device, right? So once you have an analysis of the network that is healthy, that doesn't seem anything like anything's wrong, you develop something called a baseline, which would essentially be the normal network activity. And then if anything veers off from that baseline, that would be considered an anomaly. It's abnormal and you need to look into it. So if you have a baseline, it makes it very easy for you to find anything that goes outside of that baseline. Um, you can use Wireshark for threat hunting and incident response. If something happens, you can hunt down the actual threat in a, either in a live environment or if something has happened and now you need to go backtrack and respond to that incident. So security incidents can be investigated. You can detect potential threats. Uh, if you know what to look for, um, analyzing network traffic for signs of malware, signs of phishing, or really any other type of attack. The one that I just mentioned, which is a brute force password attack. They're trying to log into your system and they're trying all the different passwords. That's called brute forcing. Um, and then develop an effective incident response plan according to everything that you have based on the potential threats and attacks that are coming in. And then you monitor your network, right? So um, in real time, you can look at it. And then this also, Wireshark also does actually integrate with a lot of other tools as well. And you can use a lot of the reports that are generated from uh, Wireshark, which are considered PCAP files. Uh, you can use a lot of those files and a lot of those reports to actually uh, network, uh, monitor the network in real time. Um, identify potential vulner vulnerabilities, develop effective security monitoring, alerting strategies, and then of course, network segmentation and isolation. So very same, uh, similar to what we uh, discussed previously. You'll hear this all the time because this is actually a part of the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is you need to isolate uh, parts of your network, especially when something happens and there is some kind of a attack being done, you need to isolate what's being done against that part of the network or contain is the phrase that they use. You need to contain what's going on inside of that part of the network and inside of that network segment so it doesn't hurt the rest of your network. So you can identify and isolate vulnerable network segments. You can implement network segmentation and isolation strategies and then reduce the attack surface and prevent lateral movement. And of course, security auditing and compliance, which is another just a really big concept that happens repeatedly in most of the stuff that you're going to talk about in in uh, defensive security. So when we're talking about defensive securities in this entire video, security auditing and compliance auditing is a regular conversation that happens everywhere. And every tool or almost every tool it has some capacity for that. So it will allow you to do that. Wireshark in my opinion, offers a much more comprehensive approach to security auditing and compliance than angry IP scanner, for example, or even Nmap, right? Because Wireshark now is going into the analysis of the protocols themselves and sniffing the packets that are coming through the network and the type of traffic that's coming in. 
all of those things can be used for security auditing and compliance in a much more effective way and in a much more in-depth way. So identify deviations from the policies and standards, develop effective remediation plans and procedures, and so it has a graphic user interface. So this is what's really awesome about it. There's something called TCP dump, which essentially does the same thing, which it captures uh, traffic that comes through your network and then you can analyze protocols and stuff like that, but it doesn't have a graphic interface. It's a command line tool. And that one is much more complex than using Wireshark. So the reason why we kept Wireshark as the, the beginner friendly version is because it has that graphic interface and you don't need to know command line. You don't need to know all the different options for the command line. And then when you have a bunch of traffic that's coming into the command line, literally lines of text, line after line, and you don't know how to search through that, it becomes overwhelming, overwhelming really, really quickly. And so this is just much more user friendly and it's easy to use graphic user. So pre-configured capture filters and analysis tools, point and click, and then you can start uh, filtering through the traffic that comes in because a network, even a small network can get a lot of traffic come through it. And then you gotta be able to filter all that traffic to find what you're looking for. And of course, a lot of documentation and community support and it's free and open source. So you don't need to pay for anything and you get something that is a very powerful tool for your network analysis activities. So that is it for Wireshark. And next we got OpenVAS. So this is the Open Vulnerability Assessment System. And this is a network security scanner. So it's a little bit different from Wireshark in a sense that this is actually looking for vulnerabilities and it is grading them according to severity. And uh, so what you can do with OpenVAS, uh, and the name open implies that this is also an open source tool, meaning you can use it for free. Uh, you can scan networks and systems for vulnerabilities specifically. So instead of Wireshark uh, just showing you what's going on and you having to determine if something is a vulnerability so, or something bad is happening, OpenVAS scans the entire network and your system and finds those vulnerabilities for you. And then it identifies those vulnerabilities and it'll prioritize them based on the risk and severity scale. And then this is being done uh, with the common vulnerability scoring system, the CVSS score for the vulnerability that comes in. And then you can use that information to develop effective vulnerability management and remediation plans. Uh, compliance and configuration auditing. We talked about, like, you see how this is like a repetitive theme. So you can use the OpenVAS uh, software to audit your system configurations and compliance, identify deviations from security policy and standards, and de develop uh, effective remediation, network security monitoring to monitor network activity and select potential security threats, identify suspicious activity and anomalies, and develop effective security monitoring and alerting strategies. And this can also integrate with a lot of other tools as well to help you with your alerts and your security monitoring and all of your remediation activities as well. And of course, you can use it for pen testing because if, it, if you can scan something to show you the vulnerabilities, you can either fix those vulnerabilities as a defensive uh, security specialist, a blue teamer, or you can attack those vulnerabilities as a pen tester. But when you're, even when you're looking at it from the, the perspective of defensive security, when you do a penetration test or an ethical hacking campaign, when you're doing these things, you're literally just trying to find these vulnerabilities so that you can patch them and you can fix them. So a comprehensive pen test and ethical hacking strategy would involve a vulnerability scan. This is done no matter what tool you use, we just are doing OpenVAS because it's open source and it's free and it's really powerful and useful. So you identify and exploit vulnerabilities to test the defenses and then develop an effective pen testing and ethical hacking plan and procedure. Um, then reporting and analytics, this is a really useful thing because uh, everything that's on the screen, you wanna be able to export all of the stuff that's on your screen and actually create some kind of a report and present that to the stakeholders as well as upper management. So it just does that for you. It has really, really great analytics uh, reporting. And so you can generate detailed reports for those things, identify trends and patterns in the security data, and then develop the KPI, so the key performance indicators, develop security metrics and security KPIs so that you know how to 
attack what's going on in your network, meaning defensively how to attack the stuff that's happening to you, how to attack those things and fix those things. Uh, beginner friendly feature, web interface. So graphic user interface, we love the GUI. So it has an easy to use web interface, pre-configured scan templates and settings, uh, documentation and support, and of course it's free and open source. So super, super friendly to use, great tool. This is a very commonly used one and other industry standard. <laughs> so moving on to the next one, Virus Total. This is one of my favorite tools of all time. I love this thing. When I discovered this thing, this is a great freaking tool. So this is an online security scanner that compares what it's scanning against more than 70 antivirus scanners. So it's a online, you can go to virustotal.com and just try it out. And what it does is you can use it to scan files or URLs. So if you have a file that you think might be shady, or if you have a URL to a website that you think might be shady, you just go to the website and you drop it in there and it'll scan it and it'll compare it against anything that might be known against those, you know, uh, 70 known antivirus softwares, as well as just a giant database of feedback that other professional other security people have fed into it and you just get a lot of information from this one thing and in my opinion if you have one piece of evidence that this thing is malware that's all you need some people they're like oh my god look this guy like 50 different response this must be bad it's like okay yeah sure that means it's like commonly known to be bad but if you have one of those antivirus companies or if you have somebody that left one note saying hey this was actually bad that means that this is a rare thing that was bad. And so you can analyze the behavior and characteristics of those things and find any data that you need from virus total. And it's very, very useful, very useful. Um, you can scan files, obviously, you can scan URLs and even uh, 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 hash values. So if you actually have the hash value of something, because sometimes they change the file name, right? Sometimes they'll change the file name and they'll use a different name for it. And so if you get the hash value for it, you can go and scan the hash value as well. And you can even search by name. If you find the name of something, you literally just go search by its name and see if there's anything that even comes remotely close to what you're looking for and then see if it's a threat or a virus. And with that information, you'll be able to identify potential security risks, develop effective file and URL scanning strategies, because you can also integrate with VirusTotal and the database inside of VirusTotal. Uh, threat intelligence and research, um, analyze the threat trends and patterns, identify emerging threats and vulnerabilities, develop effective threat intelligence and research, tra research strategies, incident response and threat hunting. Uh, so security incidents, detection, uh, all these things can be detected and researched. Uh, suspicious activity and anomalies, effective incident response and threat hunting, security awareness and education, of course, to educate people in your company, educate yourself, really. Um, this is a very, very powerful tool. Like, I feel like these bullets aren't really doing it enough justice, honestly. And uh, the best thing that I can recommend to you is to just visit virustotal.com and just get very familiar with its interface and drop uh, just a random link, right? Like go drop, because you can also search for uh, the links for known scam websites or known spam websites and malware websites. And you can do a comparison, right? Like take google.com and drop it inside virus total and see what kind of response you get. And then go take, you know, spam.com or whatever, like some, what some kind of malware website that you find and go drop that inside of uh, virus total and see the different types of results that you get and it's very it's profound a very very powerful tool um, easy to use web interface pre-configured scan templates and settings extensive documentation free and open source so these are all of the things you, you'll notice that there's a big pattern when it comes down to a lot of these tools so uh, very very user-friendly tool very powerful tool it integrates with a lot of uh, software and a lot of vulnerability scanners and uh, intrusion detection systems, a lot of different softwares use the virus total database to come back with results and say, oh, hey, this against the virus total database, we found so and so uh, indicators that this might be a bad file, or this might be a bad URL, etc. So very, very powerful tool. I love this freaking place. You should definitely go check out virus total. All right, burp suite. Here we go. We're getting into the good stuff now. So burp suite 
has a lot of functionality. So it's a set of tools for security testing of web applications specifically. Um, there's a lot of different functionalities inside of Burp Suite, and it has a free version as well as a premium version. And as you can imagine, this is also used for pen testing. It's actually, uh, it's used for like hacking. This is a tool that is very, very robust. It can do a lot. Uh, I feel like just a few bullet points aren't going to be enough to give you how powerful this is. I would recommend going to uh, try hack me and generating, uh, getting yourself a free account and uh, just trying out the burp suite tool because it's on there. Um, or just download it on your own device and try it out. But you need, you definitely need some kind of tutorial to help you do it. I have actually created several videos on how to use Burp Suite. So uh, there is, you know, it goes from beginner to advanced strategies for using Burp Suite. And they're all on this channel. And uh, definitely, definitely check it out. This is a very, very powerful tool uh, from the perspective of defense. You can use it to find a lot of vulnerabilities in web applications and websites. So uh, web application security testing, identifying vulnerabilities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, or really anything else that you can do against the website, you know, server-side request forgery, anything that you can do against a website. You can scan for weaknesses in web application configurations, identify potential entry points for attackers. So what are the what are the attack vectors that somebody could take against a web application or a website? Uh, analyze web traffic to detect and prevent attacks. Um, use the crawler. So you can crawl a website or a web application to identify and map the structure and potential vulnerabilities inside of the structure of the web application. You can identify and alert suspicious web application activity like unexpected requests or parameter tampering because you can actually change the parameters of a form on a website or uh, the loading uh, source code of a website, you can change that inside of Burp Suite using the proxy. It's really freaking cool. I love this tool. <laughs> I love this tool. So uh, you can use the scanner to identify report and vulnerabilities, providing actionable recommendations for remediation, uh, configuration and compliance to identify uh, and report on web application configuration issues such as insecure settings or misconfigured components. Uh, verify compliance with security standards like the OWASP Top 10, or you know the payment con payment card industry uh, database uh, data security standard. Excuse me, I think that's what that stands for. PCI is I just know it stands for the payment card uh, industry. So if you're collecting payments on your website, basically. Uh, if you're collecting any kind of form of payment, you need to go based on those standards from PCI. If you're building a website or a web application, the OWASP Top 10, um, Open Web Application uh, Source Project, I think Security Project, Source Project, I forget what that acronym stands for, but OWASP Top 10 is like a standard of standards when it comes down to web application security. And then if you're collecting payment card information that applies to you as well. So you you just go through your web app using Burp Suite and you find uh, whether or not you're actually adhering to these security standards. And then of course you can just use this to uh, find about common vulnerabilities, educate yourself, you can uh, educate your team, understand how attackers exploit web applications and how to defend it against those things, uh, develop skills in web app security and vulnerability assessment. All of these things are very useful. This is a commonly used tool for web application pen testing and security analysis. So this is not something that you are just going to hear about this time around. If you're going to stay in cybersecurity for a while, you will hear about Burp Suite. Burp Suite I guarantee it. Um, User-friendly interface and intuitive workflow. So this is also a GUI type of a software. Um, very, there's a lot of options with it. So that part is kind of uh, overwhelming sometimes, especially when you look at it at first glance, because there's so much that you can do with it. But it is user friendly in the sense that the interface is a graphic user interface and the workflow is very intuitive and they it integrates with the all of its features integrate very well with each other. Uh, automated scanning vulnerability identification, comprehensive reporting and remediation guidance, and integration with other security tools and platforms. So really cool freaking tool. I love Burp Suite. I've used it for many a pen test <laughs> against web applications. So uh, another really cool tool. Now, like I feel like we've crossed over to 
the really cool stuff. Like we went through some of the basic stuff, some of the really beginner stuff, and now we're like in the really juicy good stuff. <laughs> so moving on to the next one. John the Ripper. Yeah, buddy. This is another really freaking cool tool. So this is a password cracking tool. Again, super functional, many functionalities. And of course, it is used for pen testing because if you're cracking passwords, you can, you're crossing over into the world of a hacker, basically. Um, but for defensive security, right? So for blue teaming is what we can do. So you can audit passwords, right? So there's a there's like, I don't know, probably hundreds of password dictionaries that you can use to, uh, to test whether or not your team or the people in your company are using weak passwords or not. And then you just do a password audit and see how many people's accounts you can hack by just using one of these password dictionaries and John the Ripper. Um, you can test the strength of the password, identify vulnerabilities, crack password hashes to demonstrate the importance of strong passwords. So we mentioned earlier that you can't crack a hash, which is still very true, but there is a database of hashes. It's called the rainbow table. And uh, there is the clear text uh, equivalent of the hash, and it's stored in these giant databases of password hashes. And you can crack a password hash by using a rainbow table. So very, very, very freaking useful uh, tool. Uh, pen testing, obviously. So use it to crack passwords during a pen test to simulate an attacker action, identify password related vulnerabilities and weaknesses, develop skills in password cracking and security testing, <laughs> which is mostly what I've used John the Ripper for. It's been for pen testing and ethical hacking exercises, but you can use it from the perspective of the of a blue teamer just to audit the security awareness or the security um, posture of the company. So security awareness training, educate users on the importance of strong passwords and password security, demonstrate the ease of cracking weak, weak passwords, which is so freaking easy. If you have John the Ripper, you can crack weak passwords so easily. I mean, it's embarrassing how easy it is. Um, and promote, of course, best practices for uh, passwords. Learning and education, um, password security cryptography, uh, how password cracking tools actually work and how easy they are to hack into somebody's freaking account and develop skills in password security and vulnerability assessment. Um, this is a command line tool. So this is not, this. as far as I know, it doesn't offer a graphic interface. So you do need to know uh, or at least you need to be familiar with the command line. Um, but it is pretty user friendly. Uh, the options are fairly easy to use. You don't need to know complex syntax. Um, pre configured cracking modes and settings. You just choose the option that you want to use and it'll do it for you. And you can do a lot of really complex type of password cracks by using some really simple options. So if you didn't have John the Ripper, you would need to know a lot of complex stuff. But if you do use John the Ripper, it's very, very simple. You can crack somebody's SSH uh, hash value. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that you can do. Um, so moving on to support for various password hash formats, stuff, stuff like that. So super great tool, awesome tool, love this tool. Um, I've used it very frequently for password hacking and cracking. And uh, there's also a video on John the Ripper on this channel. So how to use John the Ripper in multiple instances from the beginner basic instance to some of the more complex instances. Very, very easy to use. And there's a video on this one as well. So moving on to the next one. All right, we got try hack me. So this is now we're kind of going into the the resource type tools. Um, try hack me for beginners. Um, I started as a beginner from when I went to try hack me, they, they guide you along from being a super beginner and they get you into a lot of the complex and advanced topics very, very fluidly and smoothly. Super, super. I love these guys. Um, I will swear by these guys probably until the end of time. And, uh, they even offered me a discount code that if I share it with you, you get a discount code. So if you want to join try hack me, I would recommend using the link in the description below so that you actually get a discount towards it. Um, try hack me is an online school for cybersecurity and hacking. Uh, they have training and skills development exercises. 
uh, to for cyber defense, uh, practicing threat hunting, incident response, pen testing, endpoint detection and response, um, anything, forensics, digital forensics, a lot of stuff. You can learn about new tech and techniques because they are constantly adding new content and new rooms, basically means new exercises that you can do with their virtual machines and with their attack boxes. Um, you can simulate real world cyber attacks. Uh, so scenario based training simulations and scenario based trainings, um, practicing defending against common threats and vulnerabilities and incident response and threat hunting strategies. Uh, the virtual labs are amazing. Um, there's a there. I mean, again, it goes from beginner stuff to super advanced stuff um, to practice cyber defense in a safe and controlled environment and then test and evaluate security tools and technology. So for example, if you wanted to use Burp Suite, you could do it inside of the Try Hack Me attack box because it comes pre-installed and pre-configured and you could just use it very easily and, you know, have fun, honestly. Um, define, uh, develop and refine security protocols and procedures because they have templates for it, as well as you can just use their instructions to do it. Compliance and certification. So if you want to uh, you know, it's, uh, I got my CYSA, my CompTIA CYSA certification before I started to use TryHackMe. And then when I started going through the rooms and a lot of the, the scenarios, I was like, yo, this is super useful for a certification exam. So a lot, like 99% of the stuff that you get to go through inside of TryHackMe can actually be used for certification exams. And a lot of the videos on this channel, 99% of the videos on this channel are about Try Hack Me and the rooms inside of Try Hack Me and the various exercises inside of Try Hack Me. So uh, I, again, I stand by these guys. I swear by these guys. This channel was built because of Try Hack Me. I was just recording these videos for my own reference and it just happened to be that a lot of other people found them useful and then all of a sudden now we have a community that's growing around the content that we got from TriHackMe. So very, very, very powerful. And uh, you can practice the compliance industry standards, regulations, develop security policies and procedures, uh, team training collaboration. So there's been a lot of universities that have actually used this. There's a lot of companies that use TriHackMe because it just has a lot of good scenario-based case study type rooms where you can go and actually simulate what would happen in the real world without any repercussions. So really cool really cool tool. Um, collaborate with cyber defense teams, uh, practice team-based threat hunting and incident response, develop effective communication and coordination. The website is really easy to use. All the training materials, really easy to use. Uh, Pre-configured training scenarios, um, extensive documentation and community support like this channel. And there's free rooms. I think there's over 300 free rooms. And then if you pay the, what is it, whatever the $10 a month, $12 a month, whatever that is, which is completely worth it in my opinion. Um, but even if you use, if you actually use the link in the description, you'll get a ten a uh, $5 discount. Um, but there's paid options that allow you to access a lot of the more advanced stuff, but there's a bunch of free options as well. So definitely try those out. Now hack the box is another training platform that is a little bit more advanced. So this is more for the people who are uh, advanced. So a lot of the similar, you're gonna see a lot of the similar bullet points that you saw for Try Hack Me. It's just that the pricing tiers are different. Uh, they do have free options for Hack the Box as well, but this one, it, it gears a little bit more towards people who are a little bit further along and more advanced. So you can just have this for future reference as well. So everything similar, very, very similar. Uh, you have learning and skills development, simulation and scenario based training, network and security monitoring, um, uh, detecting uh, suspicious activities and anomalies, effective security monitoring, alerting strategies, system hardening and configuration. Hardening means securing. So if you harden a system, that means you're securing the system. Um, and configuring the system for more security. Um, so you can practice system hardening and configuration, which is again, also available in TriHackMe. Um, identifying remediate vulnerabilities and weaknesses, effective system hardening and configuration strategies, compliance and certification, all the same bullets. And uh, again, same thing over here as well. Easy to use, pre-configured training, 
um, and simulations, extensive documentation and community support, and of course, free and paid options for Hack the Box. So another really cool platform for learning and training. And I do recommend that you check them out if uh, if you want some of the more advanced stuff, try Hack Me is a really great, great place to start if you're a beginner. Um, but you can, of course, grow and get into this as well. So there's going to be links for all of these things, for all the tools and everything that we talked about. There's going to be links in the description below. Now, this is our bonus. There isn't going to be much on this particular thing because after this video, there's going to be the pen testing video. And so Kali Linux is going to be a big deal when you're talking about pen testing, but it's also a really great tool for defensive security. So Kali Linux is a free and open source operating system that's been preloaded with a lot of cybersecurity tools for pen testing, ethical hacking, and security analysis. So if you get Kali Linux, um, you can get it from their website, which is the only place that I would, would recommend you get it because there's a lot of uh, malicious actors and hackers that try to offer Kali Linux through their website, but you don't know if you're actually downloading the right OS because they could have poisoned the download with something. And then when you download it and you use it, you are now at risk. So the only place that I would recommend you get Kali Linux is through the link in the description, which is their official website. And they'll give you the hash value of each of their images, the disk images or the operating system images that you're going to download and install. And if you find the, the download on any other website and the hash value for that download doesn't match the hash value on the Kali Linux website, that means that you're downloading something that's been tampered with. So I would only recommend using the Kali Linux website to download your operating system images to install or I mean, yeah, just only use their website. I like, I don't know why you would use anybody else's website, honestly. Um, but yeah, free open source uh, comes pre-installed with everything that we talked about. So Burp Suite is installed in Kali Linux. John the Ripper is installed in Kali, Kali Linux. Um, Nmap is installed in Kali Linux. Wireshark is installed in Kali Linux. Like all of all, most of these tools, if not all of these tools that we talked about are already pre-installed on Kali Linux. And then you can just use that for your exercises and even not even just exercises, but for your job as a security professional. So uh, this one was a bonus. There isn't any other uh, bullets that come after this, but I just wanted you to have it so that you can refer to it and uh, use it from now on. And uh, the next video that's going to come out is going to be the top tools for pen testing for beginners. So that will be directly correlated with this one. So uh, that is it for this video. If you found this video useful, I would recommend that you come to this channel right here and you click that subscribe button because there's a lot of great content on here for cybersecurity beginners, as well as people that are more advanced. Um, for example, uh, the top 16 espionage or sexpionage campaigns, managing a cyber crisis, uh, how to hack websites using the OWASP top 10, uh, three and a half hour SIM course for Splunk, Cabana, so on and so forth. There's a lot of great content on here. We have currently over 150 uploads, so 157 uploads right now. There's a few that are in the queue that are scheduled to go out. And uh, yeah, it would just be great to have you as a part of the community. So like, subscribe, comment, share, all that stuff. I do respond to all the comments that come in. Uh, this is actually something new that I started doing, which is I'm going to be revealing my actual identity. Believe it or not, my name is not Hank Hackerson. <laughs> Um, I will be revealing my identity when we get to 100,000 subscri uh, subscriptions. So uh, that'll be a fun little journey to go through together. And uh, do I do respond to all the comments. Oh, look, there's a couple of new ones that came in that I haven't responded to today. Uh, but all of these people coming and commenting has been an amazing building of community that I'm just super, super glad for and very, very happy about. So this has been a very, very humbling experience to go through. And I would love to see you in these comment sections as well. So ask whatever question you got, especially about any of the tools that we talked about today. And uh, make sure that you like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite network and system protector slash attacker. 
Hope you have value from this thing. Love, peace, and chicken grease. If no one else loves you, Hank loves you. And I will see you in the next video. Later.